Hey guys, Hink here. Today we're gonna to be discussing a special topic all about basically varicose veins, varicose seal, and the risk that you actually have. And so stay tuned, we're gonna break it all down today. All right guys, so um, Hink here. Um, today we're gonna to be discussing basically on our subreddit getting bigger, there was two posts. The first was this initial post, uh, this guy that has like over 200 upvotes and it says basically how PE ruined his life, okay? And it breaks down his, how he basically started doing PE, said he was doing it safely and he developed varicose veins which then led to basically fulminant erectile dysfunction. Then there was this follow-up post that was talking about, is this a new concern that we have to have about basically varicose veins and the risk of permanent damage if you have that? So we're gonna break all of this down today and talk about it in detail. So superficially, you know, what are varicose veins? You know, uh, ironically, I just said superficially, but they're basically these superficial, twisted, you know, thick veins. I'll put up a picture here. You've seen them on, especially old people, old women's legs, and um, they typically appear in the legs. And so they're usually dark purple, dark blue, and they're bulging. They appear like very prominent cords, okay? Are you symptomatic from them? Sometimes they're achy, sometimes itchy, sometimes kind of like a dull pain, okay? There's also something that's called a varicocele, which is basically like uh, varicose veins in your actual scrotum. For those that haven't seen my video, you know, I'll put up a little blurb up here, but there is a, I made a whole video about the possible side effects of um, testicular problems that you can have from any kind of enlargement techniques. And so in this case, you have essentially a defective valve in the vein. Same thing with varicose veins. Normally, your veins are supposed to travel in one way, but of course your heart has your base arterial and venous pressure. And so what the valves basically close to prevent backflow of the blood in the direction that you don't want it to go. But when you have a, uh, a defect in that vein, what happens is the valve doesn't close and it allows backflow of that blood causing distension of the veins and therefore you can, it can lead to problems, okay? So here's a picture of the actual varicocele where you can see normally you have this venous plexus in the testicles, but once again, problem with the valves in the scrotum. And so it allows backflow flow of the pressure and allows those veins to get distended and you can, it can some people describe it as like a bag of worms is what we were taught in medical school and so you could feel it on your own scrotal exam so you know right now guys if you're interested do I have a varicocele or not check your scrotum if you feel something that feels like a bag of worms on one side then maybe you have a varicocele you need to go see a doctor okay maybe you do maybe you don't see a doctor for a diagnosis okay the reason why this is important is because, especially things like, like I would never, ever, ever put my testicles into a pump because of this pressure and that venous system in there, you could potentially just draw in that pressure into those veins and increase your risk of that happening, amongst other things. You also have the potential risk of this happening just with basically, um, even if you don't put your testicles in the pump, when you apply a pump into place, it can actually obstruct basically either spermatic cord, which has like your artery veins, vas deferens on either side. So really check out the video, guys. I don't want to go deep into that today because this isn't supposed to be a big video, okay? But you can have a varicocele in your testicles and you can also just have varicose veins literally develop on your penis. Typically they're superficial. You'll see you have your dorsal vein of the penis, but as you're doing any kind of enlargement exercise, you could actually see the veins become more and more prominent, okay? And so what are your risk factors for an actual like varicose veins, varicocele, okay? So if you have pre-existing varicose veins in your legs, in your arms, in your family history, you're gonna be at an increased risk, okay? If you have an underlying varicocele in general in your testicles, you've been diagnosed with that again, that would also give me a lot of pause, guys. And so if you have varicose veins or varicocele, think very, very carefully if you wanna pursue any kind of girth exercises that are gonna be affecting the different pressures in the veins. Length exercises should be perfectly fine. It's the girth exercises that can get you into trouble, okay? Family history. Now this is big, guys. Pre-existing conditions can put you at an increased risk of varicocele or varicose veins, okay? Like diabetes, peripheral artery disease, nerve disorders, severe anxiety, and even certain medications, okay? All of those things can put you at an increased risk. When you have cases of varicose veins in the penis, there's normally either one of two things that happens. Number one, you either have some kind of superficial small blood clot, blood clot in one of the veins that causes a backflow up that, that way that can lead to thickening of the vein and eventually like literally fibrosis of the vein, not of the actual penile tissue, but of that vein. And then of course, in some cases, you can actually have direct trauma to the penis. Now this could be something like you're in a car accident, bike accident, or it could be something like PE guys, you know, enlargement exercises, okay? The most important link for any of this, especially when you're talking about having erectile dysfunction, is underlying comorbidities. The number one risk factor is diabetes. And so the guy in that post that you know freaked 
countless guys out has diabetes, guys. When you have diabetes, there's blood sugar, basically variations that can lead to chronic problems with your blood vessels, especially your veins, and predispose you to this. So if you have diabetes, you probably want to avoid doing, you know, PE, especially if it's type two diabetes, you need to get your shit in check and you need to actually work out and get your body weight down to a healthy, you know, I'm not trying to be fat phobic or anything. You can't say anything these days, but you need to take care of yourself, do cardio, get in shape, and then consider pursuing it so you don't put yourself at risk, okay? You can even have things like Peyronie disease or even different nerve conditions, guys. When you have nerve conditions, basically nerves fire that actually signal either the smooth muscles or the actual contraction of the different tissues in there that are supposed to allow things to flow the way they're supposed to flow. If you have nerve dysfunction, this doesn't happen and that can lead to problems, okay? Guys, I can't stress this enough, okay? First of all, nothing is safe in PE, nothing in safe is safe in life, but in general, most healthy guys are not going to get any kind of venous leak, um, they're not going to get varicose veins, and they're not gonna get a varicocele from PE. Like, you know, people say that I'm an alarmist, but you know, they make this post and all these guys freak out, guys. Most people, this is not going to happen to unless you have those pre-existing conditions or you're extremely unlucky. Or you're, you know, you don't take enough time to do this correctly and you jump to pumping in like double digit, you know, pressures and that leads to problems that way or you're clamping for, you know, hours at a time or not taking the appropriate breaks or basically just not following the basic guidelines when it comes to PE recommendations, okay? So let's say you are concerned for this. Oh, I think I might have it. What do you need to do? Well, number one, you need to go see a doctor so they can do a physical exam. Oftentimes they will do a Doppler ultrasound where they can actually see arterial flow versus venous flow. I would recommend if you're serious about this because in general ultrasound is not gonna be that helpful. You need to get an erection induced ultrasound where they can actually see if there's venous leak. Primarily there's something that's called a dynamic infusion caversonometry, okay? That's where they can actually like basically measure the different pressures inside the penile chambers with a a specific technique using basically x-ray and different contrast but that's what you would actually need to see if you actually have a venous leak so what are some of the complications of having a, a venous leak? Well, you know, for PE purposes, I'll see, I'll put up a picture here, okay? When you get an erection, your chambers of your penis are supposed to enlarge and actually compress basically the superficial and the, especially the more deep veins and the venous plexus that's actually around those chambers to obstruct the outflow. If you have a venous leak or you have varicose veins where that valve is blown, you have these larger dilated veins. And therefore, like in the second picture here, you do not get appropriate closure of those veins which allows blood flow to come back out the key to getting a good erection is that the blood goes in and then can't get out that's what causes a rigid or turgid erection okay I'll put up this picture here if you haven't seen my video on venous leak guys please go check that out but this is one of the pictures it basically shows different levels of actual venous leak as detected by contrast which the most severe being this picture D here which I'll focus in on where you can see the contrast making basically the outline of the penile anatomy darker but you you can also see the dark like lines that are radiating back. That's all the blood that is not supposed to be there, okay? It's supposed to be trapped in the, in the penis, but it's not. So what is your differential? I, I, like fortunately guys are wising up to this, but there's so many guys that say, oh my gosh, I have a dilated vein on my penis. I think I have a blood clot because there's this tube that I can feel and it's kind of hard and it's rubbery and it's not actually a vein because if it's a vein, it's gonna be blue basically, you know, or at least have evidence of having blood inside of it, okay? So the most common thing is actually lymphangio lymphangiosclerosis or sclerosing lymphangitis, where you actually get a thickened blood vessel. Here's a picture of it here that's kind of safe for work. If you haven't seen my video on like, literally I named it the most misdiagnosis because nobody really thinks about lymphatic channels when it comes to anatomy. Um, you need to check that out to learn more about that, okay? And so if this happens to you, if you are concerned about it, go see a doctor, and stop all PE, guys. Don't try to power through. What most guys don't, don't realize is like, especially with that guy's post, and it's like, oh my God, my life is ruined because of this. This didn't just happen all of a sudden. Like, he was perfectly fine, put on a pump, and then the next day he woke up and is broken. This has happened over chronic, chronic, chronic exposure, over time, over time, things getting worse and worse and worse, till eventually he realized, oh snap, something is wrong. But I'm talking like months and months of this, guys. It didn't just like, oh, all of a sudden I, I did it one time and it's broken. No, you need to be aware, okay? So what do you need to do? I, 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 like, I can't stress this enough. Take 
inventory. So you need to know what is normal for you, what your basically your veins normally look like, what a rigid erection normally feels like to you in both the shaft and the head and the underside. You need to know what is normal so you can know what is not, okay? You need to monitor your function. See if you're having any decrease in your erectile function. You're not getting as hard as you used to. If that's the case, you need to back off and try to figure out why this is the case. Oftentimes they say, Decreased erectile function is the is like a sign of overwork, but whatever it is, back off and make sure that you have good erectile function, okay? You need to be in shape. Like, gosh, I'm not, once again, like, I, I don't care if you get offended by this. If you're overweight, no, no, if you're obese, it is not healthy. If you have type two diabetes that is acquired by being lazy and having a poor diet, that is not healthy. You need to take care of yourself. You need to do things like avoiding nicotine, avoiding smoking. Like you need to do these basic things to make sure you are a healthy individual that so many people don't do. Now, I don't know if this guy that made that post had type two diabetes or was born with type one diabetes. And so I'm not gonna like try to like, you know, shame anybody at any point. But if this guy has type two diabetes that came from like diet and not exercising, then you know, that's, I'm not blaming him, but like that's part of the, the risk. That's part of the reason why he's in this situation. And I'm, I know it's not really like helpful at this point, but it could have all been avoided if he was an otherwise healthy guy. But there's so many people on this subreddit that want to, I say it all the time, strap their jimmies into all these different contractions and devices and have like two inch fat pads because they're overweight when they really should be not worried about any of that, get themselves into shape first. I'm not talking about being peeled. I'm not talking about being sub 10% body fat. I'm talking about not being obese. Even if you're just mildly overweight or in better shape, that's what I'm talking about. But instead, it's like much easier to basically just glorify play with yourself and make your junk bigger. Sorry, guys, I'm kind of on one today. I just, I feel so passionate about this stuff when people put themselves at risk by not taking care of themselves and then freak everybody else out because they weren't taking care of themselves in the first place. If this does happen to you guys, are there treatments? Yes, there are treatments for this. And so there's oral medication. So usually something like a sildenafil, the Viagra Cialis, will help with uh, blood flow and can help reverse it. Injections like Trimix are the next most involved things. There are urethral suppositories. You can actually put a little dissolving pill in your, you know, your opening to your penis where you pee out of, and you can actually dissolve and get better erections that way. There's letter, letter, medical literature showing that you can do something called a ligation, where if you have basically a leaking vein, they can either block the vein or sometimes even surgically remove the vein, like in this, when they're talking about actually the dorsal vein, the deep dorsal vein in the penis, and you can actually have very good outcomes from that. Of course, if it's caused by just stress and anxiety, you can help fix that, go on a medication, you know, work on whatever's causing the stress and anxiety and fixing that. Quitting any kind of medication. So if you're on like an antidepressant, you know, funny I say that as a, you know, treatment for one, but if you're on an antidepressant that is causing you like different, you know, vascular abnormalities, then you need to quit that. There is limited, and I mean limited evidence, that shockwave therapy could potentially help with that. And as a last resort, there are literally like implant surgeries you can do that can give you a permanent fix for this, okay? If you have made it this far in the video, guys, please take a second to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. But so in conclusion, guys, this is basically a rare complication, okay? Yes, I have a coach, uh, at least one other guy that had a like varicose type veins develop on his actual penis, but he had no functional problems whatsoever. It was a purely a cosmetic issue. If you want to minimize the chance of this happening to you, get in shape, do cardio, don't be obese, and make sure that you limit any kind of um, risk factors as best you can, like diabetes. And if you have any kind of family history of varicose veins or varicose seals in yourself personally, then you probably need to avoid it, guys, okay? I hope this helped clear the air. Guys, leviathansubs.com, we have our vigor, we have uh, for maximizing erectile function, minimizing the risk of injury. Um, check it out, Leviathan Subs, and on Amazon. We also have um, Peak Male Physique if you want safe enlargement aids like pumps with gauges on it. If you need to reach me, Patreon Doc Hink. Um, thank you for watching, guys. This is my personal opinion on the matter, okay, based on the research that I've done. Do your own research, figure this out for yourself. I've provided resources in the links below, guys. Anyways, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.